um, to the VGOD Industries Q4 FY20 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant nights will be in listen only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during a conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touched on phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. And I would like to hand the conference over to Mr. Anshu Mandev of ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. ICICI Securities is extremely pleased to host the Q4 FY20 and FY20 results conference call of Vigar Industries Limited, represented by Mr. Mithun Chitizapalli, Managing Director, Mr. Ramachandran V, Director and Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Sudarshan Kasturi, Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Uh, we will start the call with initial comments from the management, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Anshuman and ICSA for hosting this call. A very warm welcome to everyone present, and thank you very much for joining us today to discuss the operating and financial performance of our company for the fourth quarter ended 31st March 2020. Collateral impact from the nationwide lockdown in the last few days of the financial year had a significant adverse impact on our fourth quarter revenues, which is visible in the quarter's performance. Typically, the second half of March tends to be big due to pre-build of summer products at the trade and also due to closing of annual schemes and incentives. This year, the timing of the lockdown resulted in Vega not being able to capture these revenues. Even before the lockdown, FY20 has been a slow year of growth. For the first nine months of the year, revenue had increased by 6.5% in the framework of prevailing market conditions. Thus, the growth momentum has had been much lower than our historical growth trend. Currently, the, lock, the, <coughs> the lockdown situation has eased to varying degrees in different markets. We expect the effect of the pandemic to last for a few months before the situation reverts back to normal. During this period, Consumer demand for discretionary items is expected to remain subdued. During the month of May, markets were partially open. After 4th of May, our warehouses are progressively functioning to limited capacity in adherence to government regulations and protocols. Prior to opening any facility as and when permitted, the company has taken all appropriate measures to ensure the safety of its employees at its workplaces. Currently, our head office at Kochi is open and functioning with about 33% attendance. As I mentioned earlier, all warehouses <coughs> have started functioning. Our wire factories at Chavadi and Kashipur have reopened the last week of May and are currently operating at about 30% capacity. The company plans to reopen its other factories and branch, of branch offices progressively this month. We expect that it will take a few more weeks for the supply chain to revert to normal capacity as factory workmen return to factories, raw material availability normalizes and vendors restart their operations. Over the next few weeks, we are hopeful of ramping up production based on consumer demand pickup and normalization of inventory levels at our warehouses and our channel partners. As the sales uh, during April were near zero and business only partially opened in May, with revenues, the May revenues are at about 70% of last year May revenues. Performance due to Q1 FI21 is expected to be impacted and it may take some more time for consumer offtake to revert to normal levels. We have not resorted to any layoffs or salary cuts, but other cost containment measures are being undertaken to partially offset the impact. We have a strong balance sheet and do not foresee any liquidity risk. The company has a strong long-term oriented relationship with its channel partners and a track record of managing its working capital prudently. The inherent discipline and various measures undertaken to support channel partners during this crisis should allow the distribution network to operate in a robust manner despite these challenges. While this has been a phase of extraordinary weakness in the market at VGAT, we have in the past continued to launch new products with focus on quality and technology. We are also leveraging existing investments in brand, marketing and distribution to diversify the portfolio. In addition, we are balancing the revenue profile by growing non-South market contribution has now exceeded <clears throat> to more than 40% of the total business for the first time in FI20, which is an important milestone for us. Our disciplined pricing action 
and focus on premiumization of the portfolio has enabled us to expand gross margin. We have also derived benefit of greater contribution from in-house manufacturing, stable currency and a benign commodity prices environment prior to the lockdown period. We have reinvested some of these gains in the system, processes and capabilities required to create a stronger future-ready organization which should hold us in good stead in the current year and in, into the future. Therefore, beyond this extraordinary phase, we expect our strong brand, innovation-driven products and solid business fundamentals to further strengthen our market position nationwide. We believe <coughs> Vigar has a robust and resilient business which should allow us to bounce back relatively fast and continue our path of delivering to the strategic business plan. On that note, I would like to thank you once again for your participation and would like to hand over the floor to the moderator for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touch on telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles to ask a question. Please press star one. We have a first question from the line of Renu Bed from IAFL. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Um, so my first question would be to understand um, on the business outlook um, as we move in FY21 uh, amidst the first quarter of lockdown, uh, which segments in your view should be able to drive uh, growth and uh, lead with respect to demand pickup? And also from the context of uh, do you see consumers uh, down trading to relatively lower price brands or lower price SKUs uh, from a business perspective and could that be a risk uh, to the premiumization strategy which has been driving margin for us? So uh, our experience in May uh, tells us that all products are uh, selling. It's not that one category is selling and one category is not. And like we mentioned, uh, the May sales are roughly 70% of last year May sales. This is uh, keeping in mind that only maybe 50 to 60 percent of the retailers are actually open. Many of the retailers in the red zones and orange zones are not able to operate freely. So, with the, what it tells us is that whoever is open is getting sales. Um, we are seeing good traction in southern and eastern markets uh, because I think also the relatively number of cases are low in these two zones. So, these two are areas uh, that are doing well for us. We have also seen that towards the later end of May, when the uh, weather picked up in terms of summer, uh, weather picked up in North India, even North, uh, you know, sales had also started. In terms of particular categories, I am not able to make any comment. Like I said, uh, you know, we are not make, able to make that call right now because we have only completed four to five weeks, I mean, at least four weeks after the lockdown. So maybe it's too early to call that. In terms of trends, yes, I think... Um, uh, definitely uh, very, very expensive products or products that are, uh, you know, considered super premium uh, could get downgraded. Having said that, uh, bulk of our revenue anyway was coming from, you know, I would say mid-segment products. We were not in a very high-priced, uh, you know, product segment to begin with. Um, and also not all our categories are discretionary. Uh, something like a pump, fan, uh, you know, switches, switch gear, especially pump and fan. Uh, I would say they are essential because if uh, one of this breaks down in your house, you will have to go and replace it. Um, there are discretionary items like, uh, you know, um, stabilizers which go for air conditioners which only get sold if an AC gets sold. But uh, some of the other products are more like not, wouldn't call it, uh, you know, discretionary in nature. Sure. Uh, and uh, attached to this question would be my second question. Um, in the last quarter, because the South getting more impacted yeah. and the season going by, we saw the heat. Uh, now, as we move in the first half of the year, um, the intensity of COVID has been far more severe in the uh, non-South market. So, to that extent, do you think overall as a portfolio, uh, your growth um, could get knocked out a bit because non-South markets were driving growth uh, meaningfully for you in the last uh, two to three years? And that could uh, taper off um, in the current year for you? So, I think uh, what we think will happen is uh, need-based buying will happen. So, if the summer is good, uh, irrespective of the number of cases, uh, if the summer is strong, I think the summer products will sell and that's what we've seen even in South. In South also, uh, you know, we were actually surprised to see the kind of offtake it happened. 
for some of the products like fans. So I think it will be need based buying. Uh, I think people, if, if something breaks down, people may replace. I, I don't know whether people will go and buy new stuff. So I think that is the way we like to, you know, see it. So, and my last question, if I can, um, uh, what would be the kind of cost out actions that you would plan, given that um, on the wage expenses or salaries, nothing much can be done? But as a company as a whole, what are the key um, uh, aspects on cost out that we have planned and which can help OPMs uh, in the current year uh, and forward for us? Yeah, see, there are a number of areas we have looked at uh, where any kind of discretionary expenses can be cut down. Uh, the range of items across overheads, uh, you know, just to give you some example, we have not cut salaries, but we have deferred increments, so that is something we will take a call later, depending on how things progress. Uh, few few things like uh, discretionary elements of BTL is another example, uh, where without, uh, uh, without compromising the effectiveness in the market, there are some expenses that we can cut down. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, uh, some things like, you know, conferences and travel, etc., they, they sort of go without saying. So, there are quite a few areas like this where we can, uh, we can save costs and, you know, at least partially offset. Even uh, rental, uh, you know, agreements are being renegotiated as we speak. So, you know, in terms of rents and fixed costs. But broadly, as a company, as an even if we see volumes being relatively lower in single digit for us next year, or uh, do you think a nine to ten or uh, a nine percent kind of margin, uh, or just hundred basis point lower than what you have been guiding for, is feasible? Or margins could actually face uh, higher I, I don't want to venture into EBITDA <laughs> margins now. We don't know what uh, what the rest of the yes, year. Will so, be. I, I, so I think I think we will not talk. Uh, we wouldn't like to comment on what's going to happen, but we can tell you what has happened. We can tell you that. Uh, the indications are very positive as, as far as May is concerned because not only sales are happening, collections are happening. If uh, sales are 70 percent, you know, 70 percent of last year's sales, the collections are even better. So what it tells us is actually the products are getting sold out. This is the only comment we can make. We really can't make, you know, sitting today whether there will be a lockdown, uh, you know, uh, 2.5 or whatever you call it, you know, second round of lockdown. You know, we don't know. Internally, what can uh, what we can sort of influence or control is you know our ability to maintain margins, gross margins. So, you know, that, yeah, uh, EBITDA. What EBITDA we get depends on how much turnover we get, and it's difficult to say. Sure, Thank you, and I'll get back with more questions. Thank you. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Aditya Bhatia from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Um, so you indicated that roughly 250 crore rupees of revenues were lost in fourth quarter on account of COVID disruption. Um, that's almost 33% of revenues that we had booked in Q4 of last year. Uh, the impact appears to be slightly higher when we compare it with peers. Uh, is it because Kerala sales were impacted a lot more initially and then uh, 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 during recovery also we are seeing a faster growth out here? So I think there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that, um, you know, uh, for us, at least, uh, if you look at us, uh, March is typically a big month because if you, if bar in South India, we are a new player in the non-South markets. So mm -hmm. in the non-South markets, what will happen is uh, we are not the market leader in many of the, uh, you know, geographies. Uh, we are probably the number three or number four brand. So in that environment, uh, retailers typically will wait <coughs> till the, uh, to, you know, last, uh, you know, 15 days of March to buy products to achieve, you know, certain scheme slabs. Um, so that buying has not happened for us, but it's different for uh, market leaders uh, where more even uh, billing will happen. This is one. Second is, um, uh, I think uh, many other companies which are into air conditioning will also say the same thing that March is typically a big month. So for us, something like stabilizers, uh, March is a big month for selling because uh, the, the, Summer for South India peaks in April uh, and May, and for North non South peaks in May and June. Uh, so the the sell in for uh, many of this happens only in March, and dealers also take advantage so that they can get these schemes. Understood, sir. Uh, and also, uh, sir, if you could guide us as to how uh, channel inventory for various product categories, uh, specifically for things like uh, uh, some of the summer centric products like stabilizers and fans. And then for uh, some of the uh, uh, products that get sold through the year, uh, like wires. So I think uh, you typically the channel will be keeping anyway between 20 to 35 days of inventory, depending on off season and in season. 
but what we found as as we went into lockdown is uh, the channel was holding uh, quite a bit of inventory because the summer sales had not yet started so this is the reason why we have waited to start our factories but uh, contrary to our expectation may sales was decent uh, so we have in fact fast track uh, reopening of factories um so channel inventory usually should be early 21 days to 30 days but it would have gone to something like 40 days or 45 days uh, because of the lockdown understood and just one last question uh, you mentioned that south is appearing to be lot better than uh, other regions if you could just indicate that on a pan india basis if in may we have achieved 30% of uh, last may sales uh, how would south be looking like so we have achieved 70% of last may sales not 30% okay so please understand that we have, we have achieved almost 70% of last year may sales uh right. if you look at if you look at south uh, kerala Karna, karnataka is doing very well uh, followed by uh, andhra pradesh as uh, well andhra pradesh and uh, kerala uh, east uh, orissa uh, bihar is doing exceptionally well um, and so these are the markets that are really firing uh, this it will also mean that uh, you know the, the the sales are kind of inversely proportional to the number of cases tamil nadu for example chennai is really badly affected so we, we are not getting much sales in chennai but the rest of tamil nadu is uh, selling under sir thank you so much thank yeah, thank you thank you we have next question from the line of sonali salkaukar from jeffrey please go ahead so thank you for the opportunity so my first question is approximately how much percentage of sales emanate from metros or tier 1 cities for us so uh, our metro sales is uh, very low i think uh, you know if you look at the four metros or uh, you know maybe like uh, 15% or something like that not more than that because our our uh, market shares in bombay city and the delhi city is actually quite low our sales are more in the uh, outer area got it sir so my second question is uh, you know the gross margin expansion and we have seen a sustained gross margin expansion throughout uh, the year and all the quarters for us so uh, you know what are the uh, key medium term drivers that we will uh, you know uh, take into account while uh, probably expanding the gross margins from here on so we have uh, undertaken a supply chain <coughs> project uh, from the year of uh, 2016 onwards uh, so we have almost uh, fourth year running and it's now in the third uh, you know iteration of the supply chain project so each time we take up this project uh, we go deeper into the supply chain so first it started with uh, as a reducing inventory uh, say, uh, then it started uh, us with uh, consolidating sourcing and improving margins and now we are working on new product development as a well, access which will also look at uh, standardization platformization and simplification uh, that means basically uh, working with lesser number of vendors for components and driving more uh, you know pricing efficiency uh, we would have saved uh, you know at least 1 to 1 and a half percent of revenue uh, at least for the last 2 uh, or 3 years uh, just doing this kind of work so that is one uh, driver the second driver of course is uh, killing less profitable products and launching uh, better products we have killed the uh, lt cable business uh, which had a gross margin of something like 8 9% we are uh, we have killed the industrial lukes business which is also a low margin business and within categories also we keep killing skus that are you know sub uh, optimal in terms of margin so all this will drive uh, you know gross margin efficiency and of course the last year if you see out of the 3% at least 50% is explained by these action actions and the balance 50% is explained by price increases Correct. And what about our focus categories? What will be the key focus categories going forward? So I think uh, we have five large categories which contribute uh, more than ten percent of revenue each. Uh, and uh, when in the times of crisis, uh, these are the categories that are doing well for us. Apart from these categories, some of the other uh, smaller categories uh, have done well for us. Surprisingly, is the modular switches. So we have had a new launch in modular switches range uh, just before the lockdown. so that is doing well even after the lockdown is over um other than that i cannot comment like i said you know in this uh, kind of an environment when um things are not very stable uh, retailers also tend to go and uh, uh, you know only buy those brands which are uh, you know very strong uh, which are having strong market position 
Got it, sir. So, and my last question is, uh, you know, during this disruption, uh, what's the feedback that we are getting from dealers and distributors in the sense, how are we supporting them and, you know, the way forward for them in terms of expansion? So, I think um, as a company, like I mentioned, we are very uh, prudent in our working capital management. So, but we understand that whenever, like, for example, Kerala flood happened, uh, whenever uh, demonetization happened, uh, even GST happened, uh, there was an elongation of working capital and we have relaxed a lot of terms uh, for retailers to come back and we will do the same this time as well. For example, uh, we may not charge penal interest, etc. even if a dealer pays a little late uh, because we understand that you know if he's in a red zone, he's not able to operate. Uh, but like I said, actually the collections have been very encouraging so I don't think, uh, as, as, as of now, we don't see any of our retailers requiring huge um, amount of support. But definitely uh, dealers in Chennai, dealers uh, in uh, Mumbai, Pune, all these areas where the lockdown is very, very uh, strict, uh, you know, we may have to support. And do we expect the spike in year-end inventory days to iron out over the coming quarters uh, with uh, demand resuming? I think so. I think uh, we have uh, we have abnormally high inventory. Like I said, March is typically a big month. I think uh, already the inventories have started to normalize. Yeah, in sales already, the, to some extent, the inventory has come down. I, I think by June, July, it will come back to normal levels. Sure, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Harshal Mehta from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, I have two questions. The first one is on inventory. So, basically, your inventory is now one-third of a uh, balance sheet, which was earlier 25 to 27%. So, what is our strategy with respect to inventory? Are we expect to see some price cuts going ahead? Can you throw some light on that? So, you're talking about inventory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, inventory, like I said, uh, just mentioned in the earlier call, I mean, earlier question, I think it had gone to about 100 days. We expect it to come to about 50 days by the end of July. I don't think we will require any price cuts because it's basically, uh, it's basically a function of mass sale not happening. And now the sales are happening. So we don't see any, uh, you know, desperate discounting required to sell those products. Okay, okay, sir. Then my second question is related to consumer durable segment. So in that, our capital employees increased significantly and our margins are contracted. So what is the outlook on this segment going ahead? Hello? Yeah, basically, uh, the fan and water heater plants are coming up. Uh, most of the capex is done, so that uh, that will reflect the capital in flight. The other thing is unsold inventory of March. Fans will have a significant amount. So that's the that is the reason capital in flight will go up. I think uh, with insourcing of manufacturing for both uh, uh, water heaters and fans, uh, we are expecting a significant uh, improvement in gross margin, and that's how the payback will happen. Uh, the margin contraction is a question of top line. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, please press star 1. We have next question from the line of Bravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thanks for taking my question, sir. sir. I just wanted to get your outlook on stabilizer sales uh, in FI financial year uh, 21. Uh, given the fact that uh, um, demand for air conditioners, etc. would have been really weak, so and uh, ACs contribute a significant portion of our stabilizers, so if you can give a sense on that, it will be great. Uh, Ram, uh, can you take the uh, question? Yeah, yeah. So I think um, uh, on stabilizer, uh, basically, you know, we have to look at it as two parts, uh, south and non-south. Um, as far as uh, non-south is concerned, typically the season is, uh, you know, starting, you know, uh, middle of April, going with May and June. So we still have opportunity to sell in that area. Uh, as far as uh, South is concerned, I think parts of South, uh, like, you know, Kerala and all, you know, uh, is getting into monsoon. So, some challenge will be there in that area. What we observe, uh, you know, in the market is that the secondaries, uh, like in the case of uh, air conditioners, you know, after I think around the 15th of May, secondaries of air conditioners have been good. Uh, similarly, what we observe is the secondaries of uh, stabilizer are also good. However, I think, you know, given the uncertainty, the, the uh, you know, the, the trade partners are not uh, stocking up with the same uh, velocity that they would have done in the previous season. So, got it, sir. Got it. 
and uh, uh, from a cost perspective so this year what is our plans in terms of ad spends and capex if you can give some uh, broad outlook will be great so i think in terms of capex uh, you know whatever is uh, product related capex that will happen so that means all plants uh, that has been uh, you know envisaged to create products and uh, for sale which are in progress will be completed uh, any uh, new product launches also you know those molds and dyes investments will go ahead but non essential capex uh, we will hold uh, for example uh, you know uh, renovations offices these kind of things will be you know non essential as we as we as non essential we will hold the good news is uh, we are done with a lot of the capex as far as the plants are concerned so this year with capex uh, uh, you know spent uh, won't be as high as last year last year was close to i think 70 to 80 crores 90 crores this year uh, should be about 40 or 35 crores Okay, and in terms of ad spends, sir? Ad spends, I think we will take a call. I think uh, let us see the, the revenue visibility, and then we will uh, take a call on you know how much to spend. I think uh, every company is in a wait and watch mode. Uh, no one is planning. I don't think anyone is planning to <coughs> spend uh, heavily, at least in the first quarter. Got it, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Anshul Lohare from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, uh, congratulations for the uh, good performance on the gross margin front. Would it be possible to uh, kind of break it up uh, with respect to south and non-south uh, uh, for FI20? The gross margin? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the gross It's about one and a half percent difference between south and non-south. Okay. Okay. The increase would have happened in both. I I think in, uh, both south and non south have improved more or less to the same extent. Uh, so Sorry, could you please repeat, sir? I said both south and non south gross margins have improved equally. Right. Okay. Uh, difference between the two is about one point five percent. Understood. And uh, with respect to EBITDA margin. For south and non south. Uh, For the full year, FI20. Yeah. Don't have it handy. I can I'll share it with you offline. Sure. Uh, I'm a little excited. First time I'm going to see a cyclone. What? Well, Present feel of me. Have you ever seen a cyclone? No, I don't think. Tell me something. What's the past few? There, there should be some disturbance on the line. Anyway. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the second question I had, um, given the expectation of normal monsoon, um, uh, do you see uh, it as a positive, as a kind of negative with respect to certain key categories? See, I think, um, uh, like I said, the only data point we have for this year is May, and in May uh, we have seen the rural markets doing well. So it it looks like uh, <clears throat> the rural economy is doing well. It 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 look it appears so for us. Right. Okay. And um, just to reconfirm, you said 70% of uh, May uh, 2019 sales we achieved in May 2020. That is correct. Uh, for us, or is it at the retailer end? You say it is for a primary sale. That means company sale. Uh, so would it be a little higher for retailers? Would that be a fair assumption? Yes. It will. It will be higher for retailers because in this uh, we have like like Ram mentioned earlier in stabilizer. Uh, actually, the secondary sales have been good, but primary sales have been not so good. Right, right. And just uh, I don't know if you uh, could elaborate a bit. I mean, we have seen like uh, Kerala uh, normalize faster before the uh, renewed higher number of cases of late. But uh, in that situation, uh, uh, I mean, what kind of trend did you uh, have? Uh, uh see in terms of uh, retail demand for which product categories you saw a faster recovery and so on and so forth so in kerala uh, they had uh, allowed uh, hand shops to open uh, earlier than other places and they had actually allowed uh, air conditioning shops to open uh, once in a week so there was uh, some decent sales uh, during this time but however uh, i can say that uh, fan sales have been much more stronger uh, than air conditioner sales maybe because of the affordability factor or maybe also because of the fact that for ac unit someone to come and install it at this time i do, many houses are worried about uh, you know having someone coming over to their house whereas in the case of a pedestal fan you don't need any installation you can just uh, plug and play 
Right, right. And uh, with respect to the premium mix, uh, would it be possible for us to kind of uh, highlight how much would be premium mix within our entire uh, revenue basket? See, I think if you look at us, um, you know, if you look at something, I'll give an example like something like a fan. Uh, like a fan, if you see, we can say that about 30% to 35% of our sales come from decorative segment. And, um, you know, uh, 65% will be coming from the, uh, you know, uh, uh, I wouldn't say economy, but you know, uh, you know, not uh, you know between 1500 to, I mean between uh, 1200 to 1800 kind of uh, pricing. Maybe 35 percent comes from above 1800 kind of price. Right, uh, but would would there be a similar categorization uh, in the other product categories or not? Uh, so? It may be a little difficult. In the fan, it's very easy. In the others, it's a little more hazy. Uh, you know, uh, it may be a little more difficult to do that. Got it. Uh, that's all. Uh, I'll come back for uh, further questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Manish Gupta from Solidarity Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, how much revenue should a product category do for you uh, for it to be relevant in your larger scheme of things? Um, so I think uh, we don't look at it that way um, because we have different uh, uh, products are at different uh, stages of maturity. Uh, but I can say that, uh, you know, those we consider like our uh, large category, at least 10% of our revenue should come from it. Uh, then we would consider it as a, la you know, fairly large category. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, all the categories below that are, you know, small and growing. Uh, they are, you know, in the incubation stage. Uh, so it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that they get less uh, you know bandwidth or something like that. It's just that there may be you know products that are launched in the last six years or seven years. Okay. Uh, could you you know you shared earlier that on LT cable your gross margin was eight nine percent. So gross margin is defined for you as revenue minus raw material cost, right? Uh, so that's it. Yes. Revenue minus yeah. Revenue okay. minus direct uh, factory costs. Yes. Raw material so, cost and direct factory cost. And direct factory cost. So that would be, uh, labor would be included in calculation of gross margin. Factory labor is included, yes. Okay. So, okay. So it would be raw material, labor, and any other direct, uh, man, uh, okay, I get that. Direct factory uh, cost. Okay. My next question is that uh, you said your gross margin in uh, LT cable was 8 to 9 percent. How much would it be in air coolers? Air cooler gross margins are between uh, 35 to 45 percent, depending on the model. Okay, and uh, would this gross margin increase with scale, or would it broadly remain the same? So, uh, to be put in perspective, we don't manufacture air coolers; uh, it's a vendor-based uh, manufacturing. But yes, when the uh, when the volumes do go up, uh, there is a definite advantage. So, the market leader uh, can have between you know five to eight percent further advantage uh, on our cost. Okay, and uh, how would uh, so when you say when you say the market leader has five to eight percent advantage in cost in air coolers, how much would this differential be in fans? Uh, Ram, you want to take this question? Uh, uh, I think you know there are uh, there are two kind of differentials that happen, right? So one is the differential that happens at a gross margin level, the other is the differential that happens at the EBITDA level. Generally, a larger player who is a market leader who has market leading scale is able to convert the gross margin into EBITDA in a particular category far more efficiently, yeah, compared to, let us say, yeah. So generally, uh, generally speaking, gross margin differences uh, between leader and follower can be 3 to 4, 3 to 5 percent uh, difference, uh, you know, 2 to 5 percent difference can be there between the leader and the follower, okay. But at a EBITDA level, depending on the size of the company and scale of the company, it can go to 7 8 percent also. Okay. Because, and, uh, because if you have, you know, if you have very strong scale, for example, if someone is doing 2,000 crores and the other person is doing 100 crores, you can even have a, you know, 10 percent difference at EBITDA level. So it's a question of, you know, how we are the fixed overheads are getting converted, uh, you know, into EBITDA. Yeah. Very clear. Uh, are the differentials between the market leader and, you know, subscale players even on working capital cycle in this business? Uh, not on working capital cycle. Uh, sorry, Mr. I'll just take a minute. Not on working capital cycle. Again, right, you know, it is not necessary that a market leader and follower 
needs to have a difference, right? It depends on the model. For example, let us say that, you know, see, where can where can the difference come from? The difference can come from positioning. That is, you know, one is able to position its product at a more premium compared to the other, so, uh, which means it's able to convert in long term uh, to their value. Uh, the second area, it can come from so what is able to design more efficiently, that is, consume less uh, bill of material. The other is that, you know, on a manufacturing scale, that, you know, he has a, a factory of a certain scale. It's efficient. So I think um, uh, these are the factors, but I think, you know, it's possible to you know, utilize this, you know, by following different strategies. So I would say gross margin difference is handleable. It's, uh, it's more a question of, um, uh, how would I put it as, uh, what strategy you follow on the supply chain side and the positioning side. Yeah? The EBITDA, the gross margin to EBITDA conversion, that is a matter of organizational scale. Yeah, what about working capital? So, for example, would your working capital, in terms of the amount of credit you give your dealers, be different from, let's say, an air cooler vis-a-vis, -vis, say, a stabilizer? It can be different from products. You know, for example, you know, as far as sold on cash, okay, so, um, uh, you know, uh, trade is investing money in air coolers ahead of, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, buying the product, they even give advance. Whereas in the case of stabilizer, the, the trade practice is the normal terms of trade. So I think that there is category specific nuances. Generally, scale, uh, scale can to some degree help in uh, efficiency. For example, if you are a very large player, you might move your output of trade to a retailer. Whereas, you know, if you are at the other end of the spectrum where you are a smaller or a mid-sized player, you might move it into a warehouse and then again redistribute it, right? So, so and that's what you are keeping some inventory in the warehouse. So, it can be. Right. And so, would you uh, be able to share what your return on capital is for the stabilizer as a category? Uh, no, we don't give category level information. Uh, the overall share in the results presentation. That's okay. the Thank you. Thank you. So, we have next question from the line of Challenge Singh from the image. Uh, hello, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to understand from a restocking perspective, uh, from South versus non-South, how and uh, being you know uh, but still you know established there in the non-South, are we facing kind of a issue in terms of the restocking? Because a lot of dealers, traders, they may be to restock fear of again lockdown happening or maybe liquidity issues. So if you can give some understanding on that. So I think, uh, like I said earlier, um, uh, you know, if you look at uh, South India, uh, barring Chennai, we are getting reasonable fraction. Uh, that would mean that the retailers are, uh, you know, uh, basically investing again because they have sold out whatever they have. So they are only buying after they are selling it out. Um, so that is happening in both South and parts of East. Uh, North, uh, you know, just, uh, the summer has just started, so we heard we could feel that in the last week of May, uh, sales have picked up even in North uh, for summer products like fans and uh, air conditioner stabilizers. Um, so I, I definitely uh, retailers are very very uh, smart. Uh, they are very very uh, astute as far as uh, working capital is concerned. So they will definitely not take any risk in this kind of an environment. So whatever the sales we are seeing is uh, not push sales, but more of a pull sales. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in terms of our growth trajectory in non-South, so can it get impacted uh, much more than, you know, southern market because of this issue and uh, the push from our side in terms of the penetration in non-South can get pushed out longer? Can that happen? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that because the non-South summer is uh, not at over. Uh, in Kerala, the summer is pretty much over with the onset of uh, monsoon, you know, in the last couple of days. So, it has been raining and the you know, temperatures have gone down from 35 degrees to 27 degrees. So, no one is going to buy any, you know, summer products in this kind of a weather. Whereas, um, parts of South India and definitely non-South, uh, the summer is still going on. So, we will have to wait for the first quarter to be over to make that comment. You know, it may be too early to say that. But yes, uh, our sales in West is the most impacted because West has got uh, most uh, number of effective states and our market position is relatively weaker in West. 
And so, uh, from overall the channels, the perspective in terms of our dependence on wholesalers channels, but we are thinking is the wholesale markets are still not open, and uh, yes. that could have an impact uh, in terms of how that moves. Plus, also it lengthens the overall cycle of uh, money, you know, movement uh, for uh, any consumer electric sphere. So, how is our structuring right now in the channel, and how much dependence would be there on the wholesaler level? Yeah. So I think uh, working uh, with wholesalers is unfortunately, uh, you know, something that every company has to do. Uh, so I think uh, we are today not getting much sales from wholesalers because all the wholesalers are uh, situated in the large cities. In fact, it is the tire point three town dealers which are buying uh, well today uh, because the wholesale dealers are not supplying. Um, so as a company, this situation is preferable to us because uh, you know it is uh, we are able to manage MOP and all that. But it may not be a sustainable one because uh, as and when the larger markets open up, sellers will start uh, sending materials all throughout the country. Mm-hmm. As soon as you know, slightly started in terms of the digital front, we uh, you know has been uh, putting in terms of the investments in the technology and uh, uh, doing a lot of on the processes. But how it has helped us during this time frame of uh, lockdown and this kind of uh, event? That technology platform, if you can just learn that. Yeah, that's all from my end. Okay, uh, Ram, can you take this one? Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, fundamentally, uh, you know, in the lockdown phase, uh, operations have been, you know, the manufacturing and the you know, distribution part of it. Uh, remaining operations have been seriously run. Uh, this is the platform that we have invested in. So uh, that. Uh, we, uh, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, you know, what are, we have the teams enabled, and uh, you know, we have a video conferencing system. We can take input uh, from any, uh, you know, teams. Yeah. So this, uh, like, you know, be it mobile, you know, be it, uh, you know, uh, remote, you yeah, know, and uh, even from on the road. Yeah. So, you know, but mainly our teams have been working, you know, right through. Seamlessly and effectively, yeah, uh, through the uh, period. So our long-term uh, work, right, which is uh, fundamentally in terms of transformation agenda, progress on you know uh, new product development, right, uh, to the extent that it does not involve you know, uh, testing in the lab. Uh, these um, uh, and uh, in progress on strategic initiatives, these have been you know going on uh, seamlessly, including our usual uh, monthly reviews. Uh, you know, these have been happening seamlessly, you know, at our end. Second thing is, you know, we have a strong learning management platform, you know, which we have deployed and then we use the downtime to, you know, uh, what I would say, train and uh, enable our people. Even uh, some uh, transformation programs, you know, uh, in uh, many functional areas of the company, you know, uh, you know, have been running, you know, including, you know, where technology transformation is uh, happening. These have been running with the people located uh, off-site, critical locations from their homes. So fundamentally, you know, the investments in technology in terms of this uh, COVID period has, you know, helped us to, you know, keep our uh, operations running, uh, you know, uh, you know, to the ex- you know, barring uh, manufacturing and uh, sale, you know, which uh, since the trade was closed and uh, you know the uh, people were locked up at home. So that's fundamentally how we have used uh, technology. I think you know our journey on technology investment has been like over the last four five years. And uh, we have a roadmap, and you know we will accelerate accelerate the deployment of uh, roadmap, uh, you know, in response uh, to what we have experienced uh, from the threat of COVID. Yes, sir. Thanks for taking some more questions. That's all from my side. Thank you, sir. We have next question to the line of Kondinya from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, my question is basically on the demand side. What percentage of your end touch actually operation, either the dealer network or on the retail side? So I think uh, about uh, 60 to 70 percent of the uh, uh, 60 to 70 percent of the uh, are open. Uh, I can say, and they are not open in one shot. So week one, it was uh, week one of May, it was 25 percent. Week two it was fifty uh, percent and week three it was seventy percent. So it was progressively opening. Uh, there are still areas like Chennai, uh, areas like Chennai, Bombay, Delhi, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the hotspots where uh, you know still the movement of material etc. is still you know not free, and uh, there's uh, business is still affected. 
sir. So when you said that the demand in March May is looking at around seventy percent of touch points, May nine twenty nineteen was. Are you saying that in the sixty to seventy percent touch points, the demand has been at seventy percent levels? Yes, you can say. That. In fact, it may be a little more uh, because found that the uh, retailers who are uh, present in the tier two and tier three towns away from the hotspots, their sales are actually higher than their normal sales. Understood, sir. I was about to ask on that trend. So, what percent of her sales was contributed by rural for this tier two, tier three cities? I think I think it's been all the rural for me, for us at least. Uh, I mean, because see, for us, the big markets of Bangalore, uh, you know, Chittagong, etc., are close. uh chennai central electrical markets are close hyderabad also i think more or less close so um, i would say uh, at least 90% of the sales would be rural understood sir if i may also ask yeah, you i have, that... I have one more uh, modification that i wouldn't say fully rural rural and suburbs for example uh, bangalore city may not open but the suburb markets will open like you know suburbs of bangalore will is it was open so yeah. understood Sir, if I may also ask you, usually we look at south versus non south, but in the current scenario, given that east is also driving, I was just trying to understand, you know, what percentage of our sales are formed by the eastern market within the non south, and in the within the south market also, what is the contribution by Tamil Nadu or Chennai? If you can help us with those details. East is about 15 percent of overall sales. Uh, maybe during the this May, it would have been higher because east has done well because of uh, you know more markets were open in east. uh tamil nadu will be another uh, 15% of uh, sales tamil nadu as a state put together will be 15% chennai may be about 5% less than five. thanks sir that's very useful all the best thank you sir we have next question from the line of naval state from mk global financial services this go ahead yes sir my question is on uh, uh, on competitive intensity as rural is now uh, picking up uh, you know for all the companies uh, sales happening in may post lockdown is in rural so do you envisage any uh, you know or increase in competitive intensity there or any pricing action you have already seen by any competitor uh, because everyone will be chasing revenue uh, this year uh, because they have lost everything in last 2 3 months so i think uh, contrary to that for the time being we are not facing any pricing pressure because it is only those companies which have deep uh, you know distribution system that can actually serve those markets if you are a company that is serving only the wholesalers suddenly overnight you cannot say that i will you know uh, start uh, selling into rural market because you don't have the uh, distributors in place you don't have the infrastructure in place so as of now only those companies which are focused on uh, distribution are probably able to sell okay and second uh, uh, as this year would be challenging so uh, price increase or pricing action would not be uh, would not be seen uh, uh, you know across the product lines so is it fair to assume that uh, uh, gross margin expansion will get restricted uh, to few bits uh, over there because as you know in earlier comments you stated 50% of the gross margin expansion of 330 bits last year came from price hike and uh, remaining was from the uh, internal efficiency improvement so i think we'll have to take a call because uh, you know it depends on uh, how intensive and how far and how long this lockdown is going to be if we are going to have social distancing rules uh, for a long time to come uh, definitely prices will have to go up because the cost of uh, manufacturing any product will go up the cost of transporting it will go up uh, in fact even our warehouses are running only at 25 to 35% capacity because of the rules uh, so they the cost of warehousing everything will go up so the contrary uh, to what you're saying uh, it depends really on you know uh, uh, you know how how fast we can go back to normal if we go back to normal yes companies will start uh, competing again on price because they want to get volumes but today when volumes are anyway limited and your ability to produce is also limited and ability to supply is also limited maybe uh, pricing uh, cut may not be the right uh, way to go uh, at least so far we have not felt it understand thank you and all the best Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Prashant Kutti from Sundaram Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Prashant, your line is unmuted. Please go and ask your question. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Is, is it audible now? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, so you you just spoke about that uh, Q4. Obviously, uh, the last 15 days kind of uh, does get impacted. 
uh, because of the uh, pre season and also because of uh, uh, the the schemes and all uh, how does uh, uh, obviously that has not shown further into the into the april month as well uh, so uh, what does one assume does one assume over here that uh, this is completely lost in the sense is there any scope of any revival to any extent as far as the sales is concerned or what it can can be asking whether the april sales will come back Yeah, to whatever extent uh, possible, because you lost March. Yeah, it's a very significant uh, number. Yeah. So I think at this point, like I said, it's very difficult to um, may, you know make that call whether April sales will come back. But I think I think we should assume that it probably will not come back. Uh, but I think what's more important is how the trajectory is going forward uh, into the future and how confident people are going out and buying products. Uh, so far, uh, the news we get from the ground is positive. but like i said this is a very volatile environment so we don't know uh, really what's going to happen but but may has been like i said very very encouraging for us i think if i may add mithun uh, two observations so i think one is that you know summer products may behave a bit differently from products that sell around the year because maybe the figure varies in some geography and um, discretionary products uh, or you know replacement products you know the timing of that you know will depend on how consumer demand will uh evolve and consumer sentiment will evolve so, but right now things are looking okay just a, just a clarification over here uh, i mean we have seen almost a 27% sales drop and uh, uh, despite that our gross margin has been about 33% is it a fair assumption to make had it been a normalized quarter we would have probably let's say hit something like a 35% percent kind of a gross margin number maybe 150 basis per addition is that a fair assumption to me no the gross margin is not that sensitive to uh you know volume yeah. okay it is okay. a bit of which uh, which really gets impacted okay now i was just asking more so from a mixed perspective that had it been a stabilizer good quarter it's a very high margin from a high margin segment i'm just more more reference from that angle like uh, no i mean we'd have sold more stabilizer we'd have also sold more hands so you know which is okay. more or less okay. gets back back a- every 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 product uh, sales had drops for us it's not just one product it's the drop okay. is more or less uh, broad based you know, broad based across okay okay uh and, and and last question is uh, uh, is in terms of uh, let's say a lot of our business is also dependent upon how the new housing demand now especially when it comes to cables and all how does the outlook on that change i mean while you said summer is under uh, was under pressure and probably next we'll see how that kind of comes back but what about a segment like maybe cables and all how will how will how will that shape up how do you, how are you seeing demand on that part? so yeah. contrary to what we expected actually uh, um demand for construction uh, products has been strong so i uh, that what it could mean is uh, even during the lockdown some amount of uh, construction activity was going uh, going on in a small way uh, in 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 places where the lockdown was not very severe so it is probably what it's telling us the so products like wires uh, modular switches have done well for us in may so when you are basically saying 65 70% of come back to normalcy across product category no it varies like i said it varies product to product for example in south india the summer products uh, especially the products like uh, stabilizers would have not done well because uh, ac sales uh, ac installations are not happening even if you buy an ac you are not able to call any one to call, come and install it in your house at least uh, for a good part of me uh, and now we are almost at the end of summer so that sale will not happen but i think in north south uh, stabilizer sales are going on because summer is uh, still you know on its way to peak Thank you. Thank you very much, and all the very best. Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Abhirav Jain from SG India. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. I have a small question uh, for the management, uh, Mitam. Uh, if you were to draw a matrix of which geographical regions and what products has had good response recently last year, because you said uh, you've already you were able to achieve seventy percent of last year's sales in May, so is it across the board in the as in keeping in mind seasonality or there are certain product categories which have done better in some certain geographies versus what you saw last year so is there a different skew versus uh, in geography and products versus last year in may yeah ram you want to take that um i think i know broadly you know if you may say right you know products selling through the electrical counters right you know which are the smaller counters uh, more widely distributed more in number yeah electrical counters are more in number more widely distributed more like next door uh, those are uh, you know recovering faster yeah 
and um, uh, you know if you look at uh, you know maybe the the consumer durable kind of counter where you know you have larger counters yeah and you know in the city areas obviously yeah because the chains are there those are the recovering slower yeah and therefore the categories associated with them uh, would recover uh, slower uh, compared to categories associated with the larger neighborhood electrical stores yeah that's what you can put and then you know you can overlay the you know uh, you know the development of uh, covid impact across the country on to that and you know you will get the picture okay so again um, specifically any particular product categories which have done no, better than say, your say, you know counters the electrical counters right so electrical counters will typically sell you know wires which is which gear those kind of products right maybe mm-hmm. fans yeah those are the electrical counters right and the consumer durable counters will be selling you know maybe kitchen appliances water heaters your uh, stabilizers you know they will be those are larger outlets okay and uh, you know uh, mostly you know in urban you know larger cities yeah so okay. you know which are more impacted by covid right so those so suppose you know you did 100 maybe you know the, the, the electrical kind of varieties and the products that sell through them uh, would do 110 and this one would do 90 like that right okay so so that's how so you can you know uh, what i'm saying is electrical based uh, categories would have done uh, better than average yeah okay. consumer categories would have done little lower than average yeah? so okay. there are many factors all right like you know it's discretionary they can postpone yeah it's not a priority yeah okay whereas if you have some you know uh, you know work happening at home which has been interrupted you know electrical work happening at home you have to necessarily complete it right so uh, and how about so, fans as a category um uh, in terms of the fans so that's what i was trying to tell you that, you know wires which is gear fans right these you know uh, they are you know, they are not the outlets the more wide spread and into the neighborhood right so those outlets that 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 because you know so for the large city based stores so the neighborhood stores Get here, but only the wholesale, like lower charge, lower close, all markets are smaller, uh, smaller, and they all get good sales. Okay. So, would it be fair to say that more skew from distribution in the field? Yes. Yeah. Distribution, uh, like direct sales, have been higher than sales based. Okay. Got it. Thank you sir. We have next question from the line of Sparsh Rana from Mirabilis Investment. Please go ahead. And thank you for the opportunity sir. I just wanted to confirm this thing that uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, AC stabilizers are really 50% of the revenues within the stabilizer segment versus 25% even in TV and refrigerator. So is this driven mostly by the higher average price in AC stabilizers or is there Um, in different uh, in terms of the volume growth i think i think yeah value yeah the average value is high that is one reason all in all is actually uh, tv stabilizers sales is probably equal to ac stabilizers but the value is slower so uh, i think volume uh, it is it is because of the average price mostly because of average selling price so then my second question would be uh, kitchen appliance segment Uh, as of now, kitchen appliances predominantly uh, in uh, have been uh, launched in uh, regions like rice cookers in Telangana, AP, and mostly uh, in Karnataka and Kerala. So, how do you see the distribution distribution strategy for uh, expanding to non-south regions, and how long do you think that phase would go on? Uh, so, I think right now, uh, right now, you know, the, currently the environment is not ready to you know make launch for new product. Having said that, uh, we started to sell uh, kitchen appliances in some of our eastern markets uh, where we have very good uh, presence in the you know consumer outlets. So they have already started to sell. And uh, like Ram mentioned earlier, uh, these are stores trade in city centers, uh, and they have to they are more they are more prone to be you know by inspection by cops and all that. Uh, so their their functioning is not uh, fully you know back to normal. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. That would be all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have next from Glenn. 
from Craig. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, first of all, I mean, to all the managers, a big congratulation for having given a good performance in spite of the disruption. My questions are two, sir. Number one is uh, you know, this, this horrible is the uh, market for the various segments. A uh, lot of disruption has taken place. Some may slow down, some may close down. But what is asked is to benefit from such disruption of an organized uh, market. Okay. Ram, you want to take it? Yeah. So, uh, I think, you know, uh, fundamentally, you know, uh, we, there are, I think, you know, uh, I would say that, you know, there are two major uh, disruptions uh, likely. One is, uh, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the acceleration in uh, business into larger partners, uh, you know, which includes e-commerce this also, right? So, yeah. I think the, the proportion of business uh, coming from key accounts, which has been accelerating in the last three, four years, is going to get uh, further accelerated. So I think, you know, we, we, we will be, you know, uh, strengthening our capability, you know, um, uh, towards, uh, you know, addressing, uh, you know, the key account uh, related business. So this is, uh, I think, you know, going to be uh, one, uh, one aspect, you know, which, uh, you know, we will be focusing on. I think the, the other thing that we see is, you know, a lot of uh, small and uh, mid-sized guys, right? So they are, uh, you know, going to uh, struggle. Yeah, they're going to struggle. And uh, that will create opportunity for brands which are uh, well distributed. Yeah, I think it may be a bit of a challenge for very large brands to also pick up uh, because uh, you know that will require uh, you know uh, what I would say more wider availability and penetration, which is sometimes a challenge in the uh, you know in our kind of business because you can have competition between you know two stores on price. So I think there is a, there is a good opportunity for uh, a brand like us. Right, you know, to you know, to enhance our uh, distribution reach, right, and the gain out of uh, this kind of business, right. So I think you know, so I think these are you know, two so distribution, you know, enhance focus on distribution and enhance focus on key account management, right. I think also you know we have been you know we, we have a roadmap for digitizing our uh, business and you know we have been working on it uh, progressively over the last five years, yeah, and we have a long way to go. The pace at which uh, we have been doing it, you know, we have been keeping in mind, uh, you know, uh, an opportunity to balance our priorities. But I think in this environment, you know, we will probably accelerate uh, the deployment uh, of uh, technologies which will help us to uh, digitize our uh, operation and our reach. So I think that should be a third area that, you know, will receive focus from us. So second question, you know, the ad and the promo spend, you know, what is expected for the current year? Sorry, can you repeat the question? The ad, and the ad ad and the promo spend, what is expected for the current year, the percent in the amount? Both. So I think, like I said earlier, uh, you know, first quarter uh, will be very low because uh, demand visibility is not yet there. I think uh, May has given us some confidence. June will give us more confidence. And once uh, the confidence is resumed, we will restart that activity because as of now, uh, you know, we still don't have uh, visibility in terms of demand. We also don't know whether this is the only lockdown we are going to face, whether we are going to have a second uh, shutdown sometime, you know, during the again. Uh, so all these um, theories are floating around. Uh, so, <clears throat> and we also don't see any of our competitors uh, doing anything much on, you know, ANP. So ANP spends uh, will remain muted at least for the first few months. Okay. So the last question is, you know, uh, the, any strategic step from, you know, in-house manufacturing versus outsourcing? Uh, Ram, you want to take this? Yeah, so I think uh, we have been progressively, you know, um, you know, moving uh, business in house. You know, there was an earlier question by someone talking about, you know, how to, you know, uh, what I would say, you know, improve competitiveness, right? So, so one of the things that we have been doing is, you know, wherever possible, we have been moving, you know, uh, manufacturing in house, and in the last uh, four years. We have moved to in house manufacturing of stabilizers, uh, water heaters, and now fan factories also up and running. So uh, we are evaluating, you know, the other remaining products, and you know, based on uh, business case and payback hypothesis, right? We will be moving in that direction. Right? Yeah, lastly, you know, any any the roadmap here that that we have made a roadmap for the future. Any post change in that? Uh, no cost change in that. I think, you know, um, uh, we will be, you know, um, uh, I think the, the, we will be accelerating, you know, um, uh, what I would say, 
ಸಹಾರ್ 